Hey everybody, Derek here. I'm here bringing you my video review for Fear the Walking Dead's most recent episode, The Dog. Um, I just watched it, and I thought it was actually pretty good. You know, I think that they're really starting to take a, a step in the right direction uh, for audience members that, you know, are really hoping for a little more suspense. Uh, I think we finally got it in this episode, and I really enjoyed it, and I can't wait for next week. So just in case you guys are not caught up with Fear the Walking Dead, this video will contain spoilers of the uh, most recent episode's plot. Okay. So, of course, when we last left off, you know, we had Madison, Nick, and Alicia at the Clark residence, and then Travis, Liza, and Chris had taken uh, shelter with the Salazar family. And uh, what ended up happening is, uh, with the riot getting crazy outside in downtown Los Angeles, um, the Salazars and the Manawas, they uh, have to leave right near the beginning of the episode because a fire was set right near the building that they were at, and the walls were basically starting to, you know, catch on fire around them. So they escape, um, they get through the crowd, um, but unfortunately it's not unscathed. Uh, Griselda, who is the, the mother uh, in the family, she ends up getting crushed underneath some scaffolding uh, that fell on top of her. Um, it just got her leg, um, you know, she sustained a fracture to her leg, but otherwise... Um, at this time, she is still alive, so, you know, that's a plus. And they end up, you know, driving away, and they start to go back towards Madison's house. Now, at Madison's house, you know, at first, they're just playing a game of Monopoly, trying to distract themselves, um, but it's really not helping. You know, they're reminded about some things that happened in the past, and we do finally learn in this episode that um, the dad's dead, um, that at some point he... Uh, I, th I mean, I would assume it would be something like a car crash or some kind of medical condition because Alicia refers to um, the uh, time whenever he did die when they were waiting for him to come home all night, uh, and it reminded them of that moment while they were waiting for Travis. So I think that it was some kind of an accident or some kind of a medical emergency, and they didn't find out about it until the next morning or late that evening. So it's very unfortunate, but we do find out about that. <clears throat> well, what ends up happening is, is while they're waiting for Travis to come home, um, they notice that uh, outside um, there are, you know, of course, walkers all around the area. And uh, they end up going over to one of their neighbor's house, Patrick and Susan. They end up going over to the house because there's a shotgun over there that they could use. Uh, in order to, you know, help them, you know, in case there would be some kind of a trouble uh, that would happen around them. So they go over to the house, um, they find the shotgun, and <clears throat> they look over, and they notice that uh, the one of the walkers got into the house um, through the back door. Now, right before this happened, um, a German shepherd had been, you know, clawing at the screen door, and Nick let the dog in, and that's when, of course, they noticed that it had blood marks on it. That was from uh, the zombie that was outside. Now, um, this dog, of course, that is inside the house, um, when the walker goes inside, it starts to feed on the, uh, the dog inside. And, of course, <clears throat> to make things worse, Travis and the Salazars, they get back. And Madison and them are still over in Patrick and Susan's house. That's the neighbor that they went to to get the shotgun. And of course, they're like, "Oh no, this is not good." You know, we, uh, you know, we have no way of warning them. So they start to, you know, run back over there um, because they know that the walker went inside the house. And of course, Travis goes in and finds the walker feeding on the dog. Um, and they, you know, wrestle, you know, <clears throat> um, as the walker attacks. And Madison comes over, you know, with the shotgun. And Travis at first didn't actually want um, them to shoot the, the walker at all. You know, he, he thought that maybe they could prevent themselves from doing that. But, um, you know, Daniel wasn't listening to any of this. Daniel Salazar, he just grabs the shotgun right out of Madison's uh, hands and shoots the walker um, twice in the face. And, I mean, it was a pretty uh, intense kill. Um, but... You know, like it literally blew the face off the first shot, and then the second shot, he literally had to like put it right up close um, to finally kill the walker. 
And, you know, that again shows just how hard it is to actually kill a walker um, now. Whereas in The Walking Dead, I mean, you know, you can just stab and pull the knife out very easily, it seems almost. But, um, you know, this is a really good uh, thing to reinforce um, that when walkers are fresher, you know, the, the school's going to be a little harder to penetrate. And I think that it was very uh, nice to, again, see that, to reinforce that point. Well, once they kill the walker, um, you know, they get Griselda settled in because obviously her leg is hurting. And, and we start to see the first signs of, you know, disagreement within the family unit. Um, again, you know, one of the things that I predicted was that, you know, they wouldn't always agree on it, on everything. And we do see that, you know, right away where, um, you know, Madison was planning on leaving because they had this plan to go to the desert. Um, and they still have that plan. Well, Madison wanted to leave right then and there that night. And Travis realizes, like, no, it's not safe. We can't leave right now. You know, we need to wait until the morning, till everything, you know, whenever it's daylight, we can see. And uh, they end up deciding to do that. You know, they decide to stay and wait. Um, but the Salazars, on the other hand, they don't want to go with um, the Clarks or the Manalas. They just want to, you know, wait for... Uh, Daniel's cousin uh, to come up and, you know, pick them up and they'll go wherever they want to go. Uh, so they, you know, or that's more Daniel's idea. Um, you know, we learn really pretty much in this episode that, you know, the Salazars, um, they're a nice family. I mean, you know, Mr. Salazar was definitely nice to let Travis in, um, you know, to protect him and his family. But we notice that Daniel Salazar really isn't about, you know, working together and, you know, <clears throat> sticking with them. He's more of the kind of person who really just wants to look out for his own family. Um, and he's concerned, you know, about potentially being in the debt of the uh, Manawas or the Clarks because, you know, he talks about that in the episode. He talks about, you know, I don't want to be in debt to um, Travis or anybody else. Uh, you know, because I let him in and, you know, he's taking me back to his house. And he kind of saw it as, you know, a, hey, I helped you, now you help me. And, you know, he wants to just end the relationship right there and just say, hey, we, we owed each other, we stuck to the deal, and that's that. I think he also just feels like, um, which he does express in the episode, that he feels like Travis and Madison are weak. Um, and that is something that, you know, they reveal uh, in themselves when they can't kill the walker inside. And then, of course, later on in the episode, Daniel just flat out to himself says, you know, weak uh, because of the decision that Madison and Travis made, which I'll get to just in a second. But we also see that, you know, the kids, uh, you know, like Chris actually goes to try to save Alicia because Alicia almost actually dies uh, in the episode because when they went over to get the shotgun shells, uh, it turned out that Susan, uh, the wife who lived at the house, she was dead. Um, and it seemed almost like she overdosed on pills, maybe, because uh, there was an empty pill bottle. But that's not 100% certain. Uh, but she's a walker. Um, and she ends up, you know, revealing herself, chases Alicia. Alicia's barely able to make it over. And then, you know, Chris pulls her over. And then, she, you know, he she hits him in the nose, not breaking it, but, you know, bloodies it. And it, it hurt, you know. Um, so you see right there, you know, that they aren't necessarily on the same page. Then, of course, you see with um, Travis and Liza, you know, you see those old resentments there as they try to, you know, stay in this environment. And, you know, it's kind of uncomfortable, obviously. You know, I mean, that's that's your ex-husband with a new woman. That's definitely going to feel uncomfortable. But Travis, you know, asks her to please, you know, make the best of it to not argue with Madison all the time. And it actually was pretty interesting because uh, Madison asks Liza, um, you know, that if Madison would ever die and become a walker, that she wants Liza to be the one that puts her down because uh, she doesn't want to let Travis do that because that would ruin him. And Liza seems to, you know, agree. Um, I thought that was pretty interesting, you know, putting that on Liza, um, you know, and I think that it really does show that there's a chance that these women may be able to work together, but that's definitely something that they're going to have to decide amongst themselves individually, you know, can they put their differences aside and survive? That's up to them. 
Um, and I'll be very interested to see if we do see more disagreement between uh, the individuals in this family. But as morning comes, uh, the Manawas and the Clarks leave and the Salazars are going to stay at the house till the cousin gets there. Well, while they're leaving, uh, you know, while they're getting everything ready, Madison goes out back and sees Susan, you know, as a zombie, uh, you know, up against the fence reaching out. And of course, you know, they're, they really are debating, you know, are these people sick? Are they alive? Are they dead? I mean, we kind of know the answer, but the, you know, they're still learning about all this. And, you know, Madison's contemplating whether, uh, she should put, uh, Susan down because she wouldn't want Travis to have to come back and find her as a zombie. And of course, Susan has a husband, Patrick, who wasn't home. Um, and, you know, she doesn't know whether she can <coughs> stand having Patrick come home and decide that. But Travis is able to talk her out of it, uh, you know, not to kill Susan uh, because, you know, they still don't really know what's going on. And, you know, Travis says, well, if there can be, you know, help for them, would you really want to kill Susan and then not be able to come back from this and, you know, potentially cure her? And now Patrick lives as a widow for the rest of his life. And that's something that weighs on, Su uh, excuse me, on Madison and she can't do it. Which is why Daniel says to himself, you know, that the um, Clarks and the Manawas are weak. Because Daniel just grabbed that shotgun and shot that zombie very quick. I mean, without hesitation. So he's more predisposition to just say, hey, you know, screw feelings. Which he doesn't really have a lot of connections with anybody um, except for his wife and his daughter. That's really it. So when you have people like that who really don't form those connections, it's a lot easier for them to say, look, I don't know you, you're a threat, and I'm just going to shoot you if you come after me. Um, you know, whereas, you know, the Clarks and the Manawas seem to have good relationships with their neighbors, and that's a hard thing to decide. You know, should you do that or should you not? And it really brings in a new kind of ethical dilemma, especially at the beginning of, like, a zombie apocalypse. Would there be a reversible cure? You never know. Um, that's something that's very hard to, you know, come to grasps with. And if it turns out that you could, you know, reverse this and you killed somebody as a zombie, you might feel guilty about that. So I can kind of understand where they're coming from. Well, finally, the Clarks and the Manavas leave. And while they're driving away, they notice Patrick um, coming back. So Madison, you know, races back. Um, Patrick goes out back into his backyard and find Susan as a zombie. Um, and, you know, Madison tells him, you know, get away, get away. But, you know, Patrick goes up and hugs Susan. So you're like, oh, God, he's going to get bitten, and then she's going to regret, you know, not doing something. Well, before that happens, the National Guard shows up and shoots Susan as a zombie. And, you know, they move in, they secure the area. And... Um, it's very interesting, you know, that when the National Guard ends up showing up, you know, they, uh, you know, take everybody's name, they start to secure the area. Um, and while they're doing this, of course, we see Nick going out and, uh, you know, intending to break into a house, um, whether to get drugs or pills or something or whatever. He looks across and he sees this girl um, waving to him and he kind of like hesitates. And Nick throughout the episode, um, you know, his drug addiction did of course, weigh him down again. Uh, you know, they've been using the Oxycontin uh, to help him, but, you know, he wants more, he wants more, and, you know, Madison's struggling to decide whether to give some to him or not. And then, of course, when Griselda comes back with the injury, she gives some of the pills to uh, <coughs> Griselda. And when Nick finds out about this, he, like, flips. You know, he's like, are you kidding? You know, you don't even know her. She's a stranger. Why would you do that? And... Again, you know, that's the, that's just a matter of perspective, you know, who you are. Would you help a stranger in need or would you shut the door, lock it and say, forget it, I got my own problems to worry about? That's an individual decision that everyone would have to make. And, you know, Madison's the kind of person who would want to help a stranger maybe. And Daniel, on the other hand, wouldn't. Uh, so you get these different individuals coming together, and it really does make it for a very interesting, you know, group of people. And I think that with the National Guard coming in, um, I think it's going to be very, very interesting to see how everybody is going to perceive it, because not everybody's going to feel the same way. Um, you know, Travis says right at the end of the episode, you know, things are going to get better now. 
Well, duh, obviously they're not, or else we wouldn't have The Walking Dead. But, you know, for someone like him, you know, he he really does feel that way. You know, that now that the National Guard is here, things are going to get better. But I don't think that Daniel felt the same way. We, we really didn't see him interact uh, with the National Guard, but he looks outside and he notices that, um, you know, they're spray painting things and making marks and Daniel says you know it's too late now um whether that means to leave or something uh or whether he thinks that the world is going to be better or not uh it's hard to say what he meant but uh you know I don't think he's going to be as happy about the National Guard coming in as maybe Travis is and I'll be interested to see what people think about um when we come back next week and find out what the plan is because what was interesting was was Patrick after after that happens you know, Madison asks them, you know, where where's Patrick? And the guy, one of the National Guards people, then says, uh, well, he was splattered with the blood of the infected. So now the question is, did they take him away? Are they putting him in some kind of a, you know, isolated area so that way they can uh, take a look at him in quarantine? Or did they just shoot him too? Uh, we don't know. So we may find out in the weeks to come you know exactly what they are doing and if they're doing something sinister well that may lead to some trouble down the road so lots of things to look forward to i really did like this episode first half was a little slow a little you know not too good but i think that the second half really came back and really made it a very strong episode i liked it i liked the concept the new different ideas that you have you know to think about um, and just the new morals and ethics of the world during that time. It was definitely very interesting to watch as each person made their own decisions, had their own opinions, and, you know, we'll see how that all goes next week. So I want to thank you guys for watching. If you guys have any questions or comments, don't be afraid to leave them. Feel free to subscribe. I do have more videos coming. If you guys have any suggestions for future videos that you would like to see, please do not be afraid to suggest them. I hope you all have a wonderful evening, and thank you very much for watching.